Welcome back to ARIC 2021 conference after this short break and we have really exciting things in front of us. Uh, well, in a moment we are going to listen to a special presentation about research in MENA region and later on we are going to learn what's new in rankings and for this I will invite to the stage Mr. Valdemar Sevinsky, Vice President of IREC Observatory on International, on Academic, excuse me, Ranking and Excellence. Mr. Vice President, you are welcome. <laughs> Hi, welcome all, your colleagues. In the first session, we discussed the specificity of higher education in the Arab region. The second session was about the global dimensions of science. Our next speaker will combine both of these topics and present a picture of the science in the Middle East and North Africa region, as seen from the Elsevier databases. All IRA conferences are about rankings. We all know very well, however, that there can be no ranking without the data allowing to compare institutions from different countries. This is why we are happy to have with us Mahmed El Aysati, Vice President of Elsevier. Mahmed not only represents a leading provider of data on scientific research, but also he is himself a great expert on big data and research analysis. He also holds international patents in this field. Mahmed, please share with us your knowledge. Thank you, Valdemar. Um, I hope you guys can hear me. Thank you for the kind words um, and thank you for giving me this uh, opportunity. Uh, always a privilege, obviously, to be part of this uh, good discussions, uh, sometimes provocative, because that's what we need. Um, when uh, Habib, whom I would also like to thank for this opportunity, contacted me first time um, about uh, a potential presentation at this, uh, at this stage, um, I was very much, um, uh, I was obviously very much interested to do that, but also very much keen to uh, follow the conversations that are taking place around the rankings and what they can contribute to um, addressing these challenges that uh, the world is facing these days. So um, without further ado, uh, I'll, I'll go in and share in some of the, uh, some of the uh, discussions, uh, at least some of the, the themes uh, and insights that we see through the data. But I would like to take the opportunity also to maybe set the scene for your next session uh, which is about news in the ranking, what's new in the ranking. Uh, I hope that some of the findings of some of the insights that you will see here are uh, inspirational in the conversation because ultimately rankings or any evaluation framework, and we at Elsevier see certainly rankings as one of them, uh, are more of enablers to what's, uh, what the research should be serving. Um, let me go through the slides uh, and let me start first by um, saying that uh, the context. So let me, let, let me just set the context. The context is whatever happens in research or science uh, has to have a meaning, has to have a usefulness, right? And I think we all know how much challenges the world is facing. I'm not going to go through each of the uh, in the details for the, each of, this, uh, of, of the pictures that you see here, but obviously we are dealing with the extreme poverty still in the world, despite a lot of progress. There is still basic things that are still taking place, uh, such as um, uh, you know uh, baby deaths, for example, uh, or, 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 uh, or or the similar. I mean, there are some very basic sicknesses that are still taking place in some parts of the world that are not entirely addressed at mm -hmm. large. There is the issue of the gender equality that the whole world is still facing, uh, despite, again, a lot of progress in there, but a long way to go. And not to, uh, not, not to forget about the climate change issues. And the timing is obviously uh, very, uh, very current given the, the COP 
uh, last week and, and some of the difficult agreement that we seem to have achieved there. All what I'm trying to say is that when we talk about rankings or when we talk about national evaluations or research evaluations, uh, we should keep in mind that they need to serve a need that has some benefits for the humankind, for the society. So I'm, I'm, I will try to frame my talk today around this, these topics, or at least about the topic of how research and its landscape and how it looks like in the MENA region, how does it serve uh, addressing the societal challenges? Um, now, of course, I'm supposed to go to the next slide. Uh, I'm using the software here on the clicker, so just bear with me. Um, anyway, it, it, I'm supposed to go to the next slide. And it looks like we're having some difficulties here to, to move to the next slide. My next slide is really about uh, the, uh, the, the investment that we need to, to make to make sure that, this, uh, that this, it, this research is really taking place. Um, I don't know whether anybody from the supporting team can help addressing the, or moving maybe the next slide because I'm clicking on the software clicker here, but for some reason, I'm not getting to the next slide, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, my next slide was uh, around the uh, investment that is happening in terms of R&D. And a lot of countries are already investing heavily to make sure uh, that the necessary attention is given to research and development. And particularly in the MENA region, in countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, um, the Emirates, uh, but also in Turkey and Iran and some other places, there are significant uh, investments taking place. Um, and, and therefore, I think we can expect some, um, some, uh, some, some, some more attention from the research side. Unfortunately, again, I'm, I don't seem to get to the next slide for some reason. It's stuck on, 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 on this slide here. So I will continue giving this much more a verbal presentation. Oh, there you go. So finally, I'm getting to the next slide. Thank you. Um, and I don't know whether I did it or somebody did it in the background. In, in, in any case, um, this, is, this was just a, um, an idea to give you that there are investments taking place in the MENA region in particular, but also in the world. All, all is just to say that without R&D investment, there is no way for us to crack these societal and economic challenges. And it's good that the countries are realizing this, despite though that the investments are not going up, they are mostly flat. However, um, they, they are there, which is good, which means that we can, we can continue and contribute to uh, addressing these issues. Moving to the next slide, hopefully somebody in the background is pushing the slides for me. Um, is, is about the Elsevier. Uh, thank you very much, whoever is doing it. Really appreciate this. Um, Elsevier is really committed to support the research uh, community as a whole to address these issues. Um, you know, people know Elsevier as being a publisher um, and that uh, we care about manuscripts coming in, publishing in journals, and, 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 and make the, the research disseminated. We do more than that, obviously. We, I think, as Valdemar said, uh, we do a lot of research and data analytics, and we support uh, things like national assessments. Um, here are some examples like the, the REF. Um, and again, not everything is still, I mean, it, this, this is just a list of the typical projects that we did in the past or we are still doing. Um, as I mentioned, we support the national assessments, you know, the typical research excellence framework type of exercises or, or the excellence of research in, in Australia. Uh, we do things in Japan, things like that. We see that as an as a, as a evaluation framework where data and analytics could serve the community and the research leaders in particular to inform their judgments about how to advance research for the benefit of humankind. We uh, do a lot of studies. Um, uh, some of you might have heard about the Net Zero report. So we just published a couple of weeks ago, I think two and a half weeks ago, a uh, so-called pathway to net zero. It's a report that we uh, published where we research the, uh, the you know the, the the clean energy in particular and using all our data assets, both quantitative and qualitative measures. 
We, pub we published and launched that during the Times Higher Education Climate Forum that took place, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, two weeks ago. In addition to that, obviously, we support the ranking ag agencies. Um, some of them, obviously, are very known to you. Uh, again, I'm not going to mention each name there. Because we believe that rankings, as much as they look a league table or they, you know, they look like a theater for so many uh, providers and people are using them um, either to inform their judgment when it comes to study or uh, universities to market and, 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 uh, and, and showcase their capabilities to attract talent and, and students, we at ILSEFI see them as another framework to uh, evaluate the research that is conducted by, um, by by these universities. I have to add a caveat here that I'm speaking much more from a research perspective, less so from an education perspective. Moving to the next slide, um, uh, and the next one, please. Uh, this is just a... Uh, uh, yes, thank you. So I would like to spend some time now talking about the uh, research landscape and how it looks like in the, the MENA region uh, uh, at the moment. Later on, I will talk about how that research is aligned with matters that do matter to the society, to the economy potentially, to addressing local problems that are very much tied to global problems as well. You know, the world is becoming really smaller and smaller despite corona times, despite pandemics. So he, the irony is that since the pandemic, uh, we cannot travel easily, but, um, you know, the technology has united us even more than before. And it's, it's amazing how humankind adapts so quickly. But going back again to the basics, going back to the research uh, and how it looks like in the MENA region, what we see on this slide is some very basic indicators that, can we go to the previous slide, pre sorry, can we go to the previous slide still, uh, if it's okay, if not, uh, no, can we go to the previous slides, please, one more? Thank you. So this slide here very quickly shows the evolution of publication research output. So this is really looking at basic indicators I mentioned, which is really counting the number of papers published in the period 2011-2020 in the MENA region. You can see that it has grown significantly from, uh, from uh, you know, from I think, uh, anyway, from I think, it's now reaching the CAGR uh, of 8.5%, reaching almost 2 million records. You can see the steep curve on the left side. When it comes to its quality, because quantity is one thing, the quality is another thing, and I know a lot of countries initially focused on quantity. It's you know the old publish or perish idea, but more and more of these countries or research institutions are focusing on the quality. And you can see it clearly on the right side chart where um, the MENA region has, all, uh, went, you know, has gone under the world average to become uh, above the world average, which is very encouraging, and it says something about the ambitions of the research community in the MENA region. Now, moving to the next slide, um, the emphasis here is on the international collaboration. I think I said this myself many times, but you heard it from other colleagues at Elsevier and many other studies. International, international collaboration, or collaboration in general, I should say, but in particular international collaboration drives uh, more productivity, try, drives a citation impact, as is shown on the, on, on the chart here. Um, we have seen that some countries has over half of what they publish is actually in international collaboration manner, meaning that they are international co-authored within the papers. And you can see here on this chart the volume or the share, let's say, of the, inter of, of the international co-authored papers and its impact on the field to citation impact. You can see clearly, uh, let's look at Saudi Arabia in particular here, not because we are in Jeddah virtually, but because the volume of research is significant and you can still still see uh, that the field to citation impact is, is, is nearing uh, one5 which is, uh, which, is, which, is, which is much stronger, obviously, than a country like Yemen, where it's even higher, but again, the quantity is smaller. So you have to take this with a grain of salt by looking at the volume of research and, and how, does that, uh, uh, how does it imply 
uh, when it comes to the share of international collaboration and its driver to push and to boost the field work with citation impact. Which of you know that it's one of the major uh, metrics we are using at Elsevier in, in our tools like SciVal, but we, for example, also uh, supply to our colleagues at Times Higher Education, just to name one of the, uh, one of the ranking providers that are uh, listed in my previous charts. Uh, long story short, international collaboration is a big trend in the region, which is great because it drives visibility of their research that is exhibited through a proxy like the field weighted citation impact, which is, as we all know, is based on citations. So if we can move to the next slide quickly, uh, just to make sure that I don't go over time. The slide here just shows an idea about the focus of the research in that MENA region. So I talked about the evolution of the volume of research, that it's growing, uh, that the quality is also growing. Uh, the international collaboration is making a tremendous uh, growth, which again drives the, the quality of research generally speaking, but, also, but certainly driving the visibility as I mentioned. Now, if we look at uh, where that uh, research is focused or centered, uh, you can see a number of things. And if you look at the left side, uh, which is for the entire region, the, the, right, the, right, uh, the right chart here is just for King Saud University. As an example, just to show uh, how the um, how the the research topics are are are, are spread uh, across the the research portfolio in that university specifically. But on the left side, if you look at all the key phrases or some topic phrases as we call them, you do see the COVID nineteen recurring back again. This is this is a snapshot of the last couple of years. I think the last two years, where you can see this is you know the current view on research focus much more around COVID nineteen. Uh, which is again within health, nothing, nothing, nothing shocking. But also when it comes to matters that are in the engineering area, specifically about clean, en clean energy or energy in 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 entirety, because obviously it's it, it's an obvious topic in in a region like MENA. We'll come back on the topic of um, of how this research focus could potentially drive attention and align research activities together with national priorities or global priorities like uh, through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Now let's go to the next slide quickly to, to just show you the other part which is about the intellectual property. Um, intellectual property is typically associated with innovation even though it's much more invention protection when you look at patent data which what these charts are based on. So the chart shows here on the left side what we call the portfolio size that's basically the number of active patents in a country. The blue, again, I apologize for the small font. The blue, the blue line is Saudi Arabia. And I just picked up a couple of, of, of countries like Saudi Arabia, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, Jordan, uh, Kuwait, and Algeria. Uh, anyway, you, you can clearly see it, Saudi Arabia here, blue, which means the number of patents since 2012 until uh, now um, is, is growing significantly. It's a steep curve if, if you look at that. Um, and as I said, the portfolio size is the number of patents that are active, they, which, mean, which means they are, they are meaningful, they have a meaning. The, re the right side, which is based on something we call patent asset index, is much more the quality of those active patents. The quality is typically calculated by looking at its outreach. Where does it, where did this patent is being used or looked at and what is the market it covers? So the point I'm trying to make here is that even when it comes to intellectual property inventions that is somewhat linked to innovation, there seems to be, uh, at least for some countries, some drive because the rest of the countries, you might say it's flat. Um, but again, I only looked at, 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 at seven countries here, which is, which is unfair to the rest of the countries. But it does say that there is also significant uh, movement when it comes to, uh, to innovation. Let's quickly move to the to, 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 to the next slides. One more, please. So now, just to finish my, my quick talk here, my brief talk, uh, and again, I apologize if, if this is taking a bit too long, but I'll, I'll try to kind of wrap up quickly. In the previous section, I showed basically uh, the state of the research landscape in the MENA region, where to, su to summarize, uh, research is increasing, uh, collaboration, international collaboration is increasing, intellectual property through you know, patents is also getting, um, gaining momentum. So all looks really good. 
Now, how does that align actually with a local and societal challenges in the region? Here is an example from a report we produced for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia about their national priority research areas. And what you see here is that since these priorities were put in place back in 2011, I believe, uh, you can see that 66% of the research that is being produced in the country is aligned with those priorities. In particular, health and um, well-being, the one in red there, 29.5%. Hajj and Umrah, again, a very local uh, need and a very local, um, uh, well, I, I wouldn't say a challenge because Saudi Arabia is doing a great job in managing the, the, the couple of millions of people that come there every year, even though the last couple of years because of the pandemic didn't happen. But also information and, and technology, for example, the third one. So the, the good news here is it seems that research activities are now being driven by clear uh, national priorities, which is good because ultimately the benefits and the return investment will be shown back through research. Even if the, the real impact about you know saving lives or creating a a uh, better environment, etc., is difficult to crack, difficult to measure. Just getting the awareness to make sure that the research focus on local priorities is a big step forward. Let's make to let's make uh, move to the next slide, please. Um, and and this, this this is an interesting one in my view. If you look at the left side here, again, we are looking here at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. What, what we try to do here is to look at where does most of the SDG research when it uh, happens when it comes to the MENA region. And interestingly, you will see that this is about clean water and sanitation. Fair enough. Affordable and clean energy, very temporary for the, you know, contemporary for, for the region, makes a lot of sense. Life below water, responsible consumption, um, you know, th these are the top ones. Zero hunger maybe for some countries driven by those countries that are teared apart by war, unfortunately. But when it comes to things like social stuff, like gender inequality, inclusion and diversity, justice, etc., it doesn't seem necessarily to be the focus area. If you look at the right side, just for comparison's sake, and you look at the uh, research intensive nations, and I'm talking about the US, UK, France, Italy, Germany, etc., you see that their, 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 their focus is slightly different. It's not necessarily about what is being exactly the same thing in the MENA region, which is interesting. Now, let me just move quickly to the next slide just to show you another interesting view, which is about Global North uh, collaborating with Global South. Why is that important? Because there are a lot of challenges that seem to be local, but they are also global in nature, right? So this, this, this sort of thing, this so-called global, right? The global and, glo and local issues are always go hand in hand. So the chart on the right side just shows you um, the, 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 the line in, in blue, which is very difficult to see because it's pretty much like the world in dark, is the north focus, so the, the global north focus when it comes to SDGs. The green one is the focus on um, of, of, of the global south when it comes to the SDGs. Again, this is going beyond the MENA region, just to be clear, it's the global south. Um, and, and, and the orange one is when they work together. And you can see clearly that the agenda of this collaboration between Global North and Global South is clearly driven by the needs of the Global South, which is interesting because this just gives us an idea that if we work together as one big team in this globe, uh, in this globe, we can address the issue, the issues that are, are that, that the, you know that the global is facing, particularly in some regions of the world that are underdeveloped, uh, like 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 what we have them in the Global South. Um, let's move on to the to the next uh, slides. Uh, I'll, I'll, for the interest of time, I will uh, I will just skip this one because this is about patent data and how it relates to the SDGs. Basically, even when it comes to inventions through patents, those seem to be also quite aligned with the global needs, which is again a good encouraging signal from the MENA region. Uh, let's move to the, to the the next slide. I believe it's probably my last slide. Can if, if it's okay, this is the one, but last, just to say that trend, transdisciplinary research is one of the potential enablers for the research community globally, but certainly in, in the MENA region to address issues. This is not from the MENA region as an example. We took it from a funder in Canada called uh, Belmont. And this was just to, to, to say basically that when you bring different researchers from different disciplines or share the knowledge from different disciplines, which is the interdisciplinarity, the other one is called multidisciplinarity. 
it helps you actually address these issues. L just look at the climate change. It, 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 how do you address the climate change as, as, as a topic, as a challenge? You do need different views, different knowledges, different experts and subject matter experts from different uh, areas to help crack the problem. So let's move to the summary slide, and then I'll, I'll stop. I apologize for taking a couple of more minutes. All I'm trying to say here is, obviously, just to summarize what I've been saying very fast, um, is that we do have challenges that we are facing globally, and those challenges are not easy. I think everyone would agree with that. We do at Elsevier see that universities are at the heart of cracking these problems, and they are more than ever needed, actually, to help. Uh, address these challenges. Can rankings uh, create a healthy competitiveness across these universities to help them drive this, this, these challenges, to actually to drive uh, uh, the solutions to this, uh, these challenges? I would like you to focus in your discussions about what's new in the rankings to link those activities that they are doing through the rankings in something that benefits the society. Research in the MENA region has been making big steps, as I said earlier. Strategy seems to be focusing on aligning those activities with their local challenges. But clearly, obviously, just like everybody else in the world, there are a long, there is still a long way to go. Finally, just to say, it's, it's, it's really our commitment, and I genuinely mean this, and the people who are there know me, they know how I'm passionate about these topics. We go beyond publishing, as I said earlier. We are really looking at expanding our data capabilities. We talk a lot about publications and citations, but we are adding funding data, we are adding patent data, we are adding policy citation documents, for example, you know, clinical citations, all data that we can get our hands on, whether proprietary or licensing them. We are happy to work with you to make sure that whatever methodology you are coming up with can be evolved, evolved through data and analytics to hopefully have better ways to measure this uh, th this impact on society, this impact on humankind, as I mentioned earlier. So with that, Valdemar, and with my apologies for taking four more minutes than that I, that I helped, uh, and with, with, with apologies for the issues that I had with the Clicker software, I hope somewhat this sets the scene for your next uh, session, and I'll look forward to uh, hear what comes out of it. Thank you. Mohamed, uh, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation. We received the picture of the MENA science seen in the mirror of the Elsevier databases. Thank you very much.